I'm going to start recording. <clears throat> can everybody hear me? I can. Great. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so I sent out this uh, version three of the draft, <clears throat> which um, is a combination of kind of the, the spreadsheet that Beth created <clears throat> and what I was working with. And so we've removed, <clears throat> excuse me, the tiers uh, organization, but I've preserved that with the, oh, I should start sharing my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay. So we have the uh, library names on the, l the first column. And then I put the groups, the former groups, um, in the second column, just so we can see where they were <clears throat> in case we need to sort by that or filter by that or something. And then uh, we decided in the last meeting to use active accounts rather than service population and the average of that over three years. So that uh, is captured in this column F and that's percentage of, the, of that um, as a portion of SAGE active accounts as a whole <clears throat> in column G. Then we've got previous two years of pricing and the um, estimate of what the billing would be if we made no changes and went with a 2% increase of fees, just so we can have some frame of reference to compare. So <clears throat> at the last meeting, December 19th, we decided to go with active card holders, um, maybe on the type of public entities, maybe it's on a flat fee, a yes on collection size, a yes on CERC, uh, a yes on collection budget, but then <clears throat> it seemed like at, towards the end of the meeting we decided that was kind of a duplication of um, collection size. And then a ratio of uh, SAGE interlibrary loan, uh, whether they're net loaners or let net borrowers, some kind of a figure there. So each of these different spreadsheets here that you can click through have the detailed calculations, but those refer back to this summary spreadsheet. And so we can see um, them more at a glance. So the first column option one here is just 100% based on the active accounts. <clears throat> and then this uh, change refers to column N, which is the 2% fee increase if we made no changes. <clears throat> the um, red and green highlighted, those are the top 10% increases and the bottom 10% decreases, just to see who are the biggest winners and losers with these different scenarios. We've got option two, which is 100% based on a per item fee, which um, is right here, 17 cents per item. And I've that, just selected that to get as close as possible to uh, the operations budget target that we need to get to, which is actually 219, uh, almost 220,000. <clears> um, Perry? Yeah. Just a quick caveat with, um, Columbia Gorge Community College, we have an, a deal where um, all of the students are automatically added to the system upon registration. So there's a, a huge difference between all of these registered patrons and how many actually use the library. Okay. 
I don't know how we can adjust for that, but um, when I look at that number, I think, oh gosh, yeah, um, that's because mm -hmm. um, there we've got an automatic process going on, like, similar to like what we did with EOU, so that all students are issued a library card, but whether they use it or not mm -hmm. is kind of so highly doubtful. It's the activity on the account isn't taken into effect at all. Correct. Mm. Okay. That's so we might have to that. adjust. Well, yeah. these are just the different options we have to choose from. So, uh, option two, column S, that's based on 100% of items only. And then uh, the rest of the options, we start uh, mixing up um, the calculation with a with a variety of things. So, um, <clears throat> the courier, I should mention, is um, separate on these. That's um, the 35,000 distributed among the members um, by their portion of use. So option three here takes 80% uh, of the active accounts and 20% uh, is based on 20% of the um, the base fee. Well, let me, let me go back a little bit. So, uh, the operations budget of 220000 if we subtract the courier fee from that, then we get the 100% that we're trying to get to from everything but the courier. So what we're looking at is 220 trying to reach 185,000 basically with this 80% and 20. So 20% 20 of the 185,000 is the career, is the um, the base fee and 80% of that is the based on the uh, active accounts. So that gets us these figures. And option 4 is Okay, the same except for on the courier, I've calculated a bit of a discount, which is like a 50 cents on whether they are net loaner or borrower. So we can refer over to this worksheet and You'll see that the courier fee, we'll take Pendleton for an example. They have 8.5% of SAGE total interlibrary loan borrowing and they <clears throat> borrow more than they lend. So basically their, their fee is their fee of uh, extra career fee of 4500 is 8% 8 and a half percent of the 35,000 plus half of this difference between the loan borrow I hope that makes sense and then uh, option 5 is based on the number of items, whereas option four was based on the primarily the uh, accounts. Option six uses circulation as that major, 80%. And then, or, this should be option seven, which is a new one I added after I sent out the spreadsheet to everybody. And this mixes them all up a little bit more, but also includes that courier fee with the half discount, whether they're a net loaner or a borrower. So who are the major uh, winners and losers? This red indicates that's one of the top 10% um, Members that it's going to see an increase, that would be Baker, so ours would go up 3,700. BMCC would go down 3,800. 
Harney would go up. Oh, that's ESD. Harney ESD would go up um, 5,400. But they're they're new members, so I'm not sure we have uh, good data on them. Yeah, uh, that confuses me because Harney ESD is such a small. I mean, they hardly do any lending at all or borrowing. Mm -hmm. They have very few patrons. I mean, basically, they're just a resource for the schools. So, um, trying to figure out why they'd be so high. Let's look at the spreadsheet detail. So the, yeah, that average circ figure seems pretty big, 43,000. Oh, that's not right. That yeah, must be wrong. I mean, we're lucky if they circulated 100 things this past year. I mean. Okay. Is that right over so here? So did I get it wrong on my spreadsheet? Circ. Uh, yeah, we'll have to look at that because I just, um, either that or I made an error. Oh, I bet I have uh, ESD and Harney library swapped here because 43,000 would make more sense for. Yes, yeah. it would. Okay. So that's probably true across the board for that whole line. Yeah, the whole line is. So I just need you to. You could just switch the name. The, the names, yeah. I yeah. Mean, Okay, so Harney Library would go up. Are they, were they really only paying 1300 No, that doesn't seem right either. So I think this is also wrong. That part needs to be switched too. Yeah. yeah. So that's, anyway, let's disregard that. That needs to be fixed. <clears throat> Um, so the next big increase would be Hood River. Theirs would go up to 18000 That's a $4,600 increase. Uh, La Grand, no, this is Cal Klamath. That's a reduction of 3700 La Grand would go up by 3800 Oregon Trail would go down to 6,600. That's a reduction of 4,000. Uh, the Dalles, which is our, I think, undisputably our b biggest uh, member as far as population and um, circulation. Their fee is just over 20,000. That's an increase of 6,700. Umatilla. Public library. This would go down significantly by 8,000. I'm, I'm not sure if that's correct either. So there may be a couple things here we have to the fix, but um, we can play around with the weights, the percentage weights on these, certainly to see um, the difference and. I should have linked these in reverse so that we could just change them here and they would change on the spreadsheets, but we actually um, have to go to the individual spreadsheets and change them there, and then they would automatically populate on that summary. <clears throat> so does anybody have any comments at this point? Want to see a different percentage on the algorithms? I'm not, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to look at it close enough to say I want that, but I guess from your perspective building this, is there one of these that you feel like is giving us more of what we want than another one? Is, you know, the last one seemed to be the one you seem most interested in. But yeah, yeah, that's, that is 
perceptive because um, I all of these ones I felt like weren't quite fair. They had too much disparity in them. Mm -hmm. And this last one that that broke up the different categories with percentages um, seemed a, much more evenly distributed and kind of not a big difference in most cases um, okay. from what we're used to and the ones that are different I think are pretty justified in having their pricing changed. Okay. If, if I remember right, was Hood River and, and Wasco County two that we're going to see an increase? Yes. And is that increase going to be enough that it's going to cause those two to look elsewhere or anything? I mean, I think that's just a realistic issue we have to deal with. Right. I think I, that's I don't know. part of the discussion um, preceding the council meeting as well as at the council meeting. I think that these large systems, if they went somewhere else, they'd be paying a lot more um, to have their own system. So I don't think it will, but obviously right. um, we'd have to talk about phasing this increase in mm -hmm. um, so that their budget could handle it. Right. Well, and if, if I remember right, 6,000 was as high as any of the increases were. Uh, 6,700, yes, that's the largest so, one. in that ballpark, um, I guess my sense on that is, is if that's phased in even over three years, that's probably doable. Mm hmm For most. And, and it, the decreases would be phased in as well, right, Right, Perry? right. <clears throat> and I'm not sure where the Dallas is getting their collection money, but... Oh, I'm seeing um, dozens of copies of movies. Oh, yeah, added. they've got plenty of money. They, so yeah. I don't think <laughs> this increase would really phase them, okay. them at all. Hood River, I'm not, I think that's, you know, it's a bit of more of a challenge, but I think it's doable, phased in. Mm -hmm. Same with LeGrand. Harney, um, actually, it's Harney Library. Um, they'd be 68 versus, so that change isn't so big. It's really only 68 from 54. Yeah, it's a much smaller increase than it shows. <clears throat> right, there. right. Oh, okay, yeah. And as far as Baker, um, that's you know, something that we could adjust to certainly phase that in over time. Do we want to um, take this down to that, that last option then? And then is it is it of any value to say, what if we change the, I, I'm still not really clear on the 80-20 split with the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that part. And I don't know if there's other splits you're doing as well or how much, you know, one thing affects over the other. I, you know, I just, I know when I, I, I've been doing the same thing with another finance issue I'm dealing with right now. And as I, as I played with a percentage number or a, a, an hourly figure, you know, I, I looked at, you know, different numbers and it caused me to realize some things. And so I'm wondering if, if doing, um, if we'll find the same thing that if we raise this number but lower that number, we bring everybody in closer to where they were, or it's presenting something that seems to be reasonably fair mm -hmm. or better. And not and without, you know, I looked at what you sent out last Friday, um, but I don't remember this level of detail in that at all. Um, I, you know, I, there was one page I think, and so I didn't get a chance to look at the. Uh, the detail underneath it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if any of us will really spend time with that or not. To be honest with you. Yeah, the weights is a, how to weight the different categories is a challenge, and I would like probably input from the Sage membership on 
mm -hmm. how we should weight those. So I think a survey would be a good good way to determine that. I think I think we need to start with a, you know, with with some of the background of what we've done up to this point and why we've selected some of these things, because the population seemed to be, you know, it it was overwhelmingly popular, but it's not it's not necessarily a fair structure. But I think what we have put in tries to bring that fairness back in and balance things out. Mm -hmm. And I think if we present that and then, you know, the, the challenge is, is when you say that, you know, how do we represent how much of this is built based on your CERCs, how much of it is really affected by your, your borrowing or your net lending or your net borrowing, um, all of those things. I don't know how we, not having built this, I wouldn't know how we would describe those formulas mm -hmm. well I, I think I could um, before we present it to the the council or the general membership um, revise this percentage breakdown so that we don't have 200 percent but we have just 100 percent and so that makes more sense to people logically mm -hmm. and then also with a um, a row that has the courier discount um, at whatever portion we want to allocate that zero or mm -hmm. half per per net loan or borrow. Yeah, that makes sense, Perry, to have the courier um, in a separate column so that they can see the the savings or the surcharge mm -hmm. based upon their um, loan loaning borrowing status. Right. Yeah, because they're going to want to see that. I think they're also going to want to see um, the service population actually and how that yes. compares to the active accounts because we we made the change here, but people are skilled since we're used to that being the metric that databases and other services um, bill us. They're going to want to see how that looks as well. So. I'll get that ready to just anticipating questions. Um, Perry, I, can I suggest that perhaps, and I know you've already put a great deal of work into this and I hate to ask you to do more, but I, I also think we need something that we can present to the uh, group as a whole. Um, and I'm not sure this is it. You know, one, there's some cleanup that has to be done obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think if we dropped out some of these options mm -hmm. um, that seem to have, you know, less of a, less of a criteria um, and then say, in the end, what we want to recommend and focus on is this, but we wanted you to know that yes, we did look at it in these other ways. Yeah. Yeah. These are easily hideable. I can just okay. hide everything but the one we want to see. Right. Or unhide it. Um, but for people that do want to get into the details, it's good to have that toggle ability. Yep. So next steps, should we survey the, um, the general membership or at least the directors on how they might want to wait Accounts, items, base, fee, circ. Yeah, I think a survey would be good. And, and basically saying the budget committee is looking at, you know, kind of give them a little bit of background. And we've highlighted these areas that we feel um, are applicable to um, system use. And we'd like your feedback on what weight each of these should have mm -hmm. and see what they um, see what they think so today's sixth um, could probably get something out tomorrow which if we reset respond by the end of the week or at least by Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Um, we'd have that feedback in time for 
our other meeting that we reserved. I think that was on the 15th. I couldn't remember. Good luck here. Yeah, 15th at 9 a.m. was the next most popular meeting. Yep. Okay. And that would get us, uh, and I think, in a good place before the user council meeting on the 21st. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think, Perry, you, all this work you've done has gotten us really close. I, I feel good looking at these numbers, feeling like um, we've got a consistent strategy that we're using on all the libraries in the system. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a matter of maybe minorly, you know, maybe may, making some minor tweaks to the percentage or just leaving them the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, and then working with the libraries that have big changes um, and, and doing a phased approach. Right. Great. Glad to hear it. I'm pleased too. It's a it's a puzzle and it's uh, coming together it is. to be logical and fair uh, for all the membership, even though it uh, will involve some growing pains for some. So now the ba the base fee for our ILL only libraries. Um, oh right. Mm -hmm. What's that at? Uh, let's see. Counts base career. So twenty percent. Um, six eighty five. Okay. And I think the base fee now is four five hundred. Um, it's around four hundred. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to kind of weigh options for some of the libraries that don't do um, resource sharing at all, um, like the museum libraries or or high schools that do very little resource sharing. It. Um, They might have to explore different options, but we can discuss that separately, I guess. Okay. I mean, it makes sense for the rest of the libraries. It's just those ILL only or the museum libraries that um, might be problematic. It's like if they only borrow um, three things a year for their students, they're spending 200 and some dollars per interlibrary loan, and that's just not cost effective in my brain, but. Well, that's that's the base fee, not calculating the courier fee. That would be separate. So this is just, they have their inventory oh. in the system, right? They have their inventory in the system, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the logic of the base fee is that it's paying for the infrastructure, it's paying for the ability to import records or attach records to um, bibs that other SAGE members have created. That's the value that they're buying into. Maintenance and the security of the system. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think some of those probably, let's take a look at this, this one that was just three Helix. Oh, they're just. Helix is a regular circulating library. Okay. They're really low. Yeah. They're tiny. Um, who else is really? Tomastlict would be one you're talking about. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's look at theirs. And they have debated about withdrawing in the past. Okay. So they actually under this option seven would be at 788. 748? 748, yeah. And um, if that's guess... compared to uh, like the options that we you mentioned, somebody went to library library thing. Yeah, and, and I might kind of give them 
um, that as an alternative because they're not growing their collection. They don't have anybody there cataloging. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a placeholder. They're not doing any circ. Uh, their collection might be better off in something like Library of Things. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if we lose a few that are in that category, it's not going to impact us hugely financially. Right. Um, exactly. But they'll be better off potentially. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll do some more work. So this is more um, understandable at a glance without too much work explaining um, and try to anticipate any other questions before we present it. And so who wants to do the survey? Beth, do you want to do that? You want me to send that out? Oh, I'd, I'd be glad to work on the survey, Perry. Okay. Um, um, we can work on it together so that we can get the, the right verbiage out there. Um, I was trying to think in my brain how we wanted to uh, work the question so that the percentages mm -hmm. um, get to 100 by each person who's participating right. so that they can't, you know, so that we have the results we want their view of how the 100% should be broken down. Right. So I'll do some thinking about that. Okay. Sounds good. Anybody else who hasn't spoken up want to chime in? Hi, everyone. Sorry, I had to, um, someone come in my office. Um, uh, this is awesome, Perry, and I want to take just some time and look at all the different options, but I really appreciate all the work that you have done on this. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I really, um, I feel really good about the, the different areas that you, that we've chosen to kind of look at, um, how we, um, create the fee structure because it's, um, these are the things that people are using Sage for, and so it makes a lot of sense. So I'm I'm gonna spend some time really looking at it uh, further in depth, and um, see where we go from there. So thank you. You are welcome. Okay, so let's plan on meeting um, on the fifteenth, and uh, you already have that um, login link for that I sent out before. Okay, and look okay. for that for the survey coming out hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, Perry. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.